All right, now, um, everyone, let's talk about chapter four, uh, theory in psychology. Now, the first term we want to discuss will be phenomenon and uh, theories. So, a phenomenon is a general result has been observed. Okay, that is the key word. Reliable, uh, re reliably in empirical research. Uh, anyhow, it's just some uh, observation. Okay. So the more people who are present in an emergency situation, the less likely it is that uh, any one of them will help. That's called the bystander effect. You probably know that. Or people tend to explain others' behavior in terms of their personal characteristics and, as opposed to the situation they are in. In other words, suppose that you see some people driving and uh, kind of like driving crazily. Um, you are more likely you assume, ah, that's, that person is crazy, is a bad driver. That's, you know, personal characteristics. Instead of maybe some, uh, something unexpected to happen. Maybe um, another person have a heart attack or, you know, something else. Yeah. Right. So, now, every phenomenon has, uh, you know, a lot, a lot of plausible explanations. So we need studies to um, find out the truth. Now, a theory is a coherent explanation or interpretation of one or more phenomena. So, in other words, remember this, a phenomenon versus theory is like observation versus model. All right, so what are theories for? First, organization of a research result, okay? Also, prediction, this is um, uh, one of the keys, of the fun key functions of theory. Prediction of outcome in the new situation. So what will happen if the theory is correct, then it should work in a, um, a different situation. And finally, generating new research. We publish um, the result um, and uh, you know attract more um, uh, uh, research. All right, now this is just um, you know um, a model. So for example, this is um, uh, human's memory information. Uh, uh, go to the sensory, um, store in sensory for split seconds. So, for example, your eye. In your eye neuron, um, I can store the, the memory for a very brief moment. And then, if you pay attention, then you will go to short term memory. And if you rehearse, then you probably go to the long term memory. And uh, but still, you will forget. This is retrieval, by the way. Now, this is um, the theory about intelligence. Now, so intelligence is what composed of uh, intelligence? Mathematic ability, um, a spatial, like, uh, you know, oh, this is space, excuse me, like uh, rubric cube, whatever, and uh, verbal ability. There are probably more, but uh, this is probably kind of a big component. Um, and of course, uh, once intelligence is not only I mean, we are still far from um, uh, getting all the uh, uh, human some intelligence to figure it out. But this is a good model. This is a model most popular. Uh, theories uh, vary widely in their um, three dimensions. The first one is a formality. So some are really formal and some are informal. So for example, remember this, um, uh, drive theory is quite informal. It's a simple, easy to understand. So, drive theory of a social facilitation inhib inhibition. Um, easier to understand, but less precise. But uh, what exactly is that? You can read your book about it here. I just uh, really quick uh, explain. So, if you are performing some task and uh, you are already good at it, then uh, if, uh, if there is an audience, then your performance will be boosted. You, know, will, you will become even better. But um, if you are not good at that task, uh, all the audience observation of you, um, uh, you uh, you you become worse. Okay, this is really easy. To, now, on the other end of uh, spectrum, we have some really formal theory, and uh, this I don't even attempt to understand that. It has formulas, you know, quite precise, quite complicated, but you know, yeah, I mean. Better predict predict power. So the second um, dimension is the scope and the number and variety of a phenomenon explained. So for example, Freud's theory tried to explain everything, but I 
actually is not really a good theory. Um, it's not for survival. Um, narrow theory focus on a very particular phenomenon. So for example, um, uh, with the ability to quickly and accurately perceive the number of objects in the scene without counting them. Um, uh, if, you know, normal humans on average, um, the number is four or less. And then uh, the third dimension is our theoretical approach. You know, how much theory explains the phenomena in terms of their function, why it happens. Um, for this, um, uh, this three dimension, all you need to remember is some um, of this three, and also the drive theory. Okay. If you want to construct or choose a theory, well, actually, you want to create a good theory. There are two things. First, you understand um, uh, the phenomena you want you want to study, you know, of course. But then the second one is quite important. You need to know if there are any existing theories. Okay. Um, that's why we need a um, uh, um, uh, complete uh, throughout uh, uh, literature review. Okay. So your new theory must uh, first provide um, a good explanation of the phenomenon. And second, better than the existing theory. Otherwise, why create a new theory? Wasting of time. All right, now let's come back. Uh, come to uh, talk about hypothesis. Uh, this is quite important if you want to do a study. Uh, um, you need to have a good hypothesis. So a hypothesis is a prediction. Okay, what will happen, right? Um, and it should be uh, uh, falsifiable, right? So one thing you have to remember is how if a hypothesis confirm a theory. It only strengthens a theory, but it can never prove a theory in the in the field of psychology. Okay, maybe in the hard science like uh, hardcore science like uh, physics, chemistry. Um, you know, it can it can become law if um, a theory is proven. Uh, it can be proven, um, but in psychology, uh, can't. Um, on the other hand, if you want to abandon a theory, um, it probably takes us uh, several um, uh, uh, disconfirmations. Okay. All right. So a hypothesis must be first synthetic statement. In other words, it can be either be true or false. It cannot be like Freud. I mean, whatever is true. I mean, he's always right. And uh, the second, falsifiable. Right, it can be disapproved. So let's um, uh, test. Um, I think about this if um, uh, the following statements are uh, good hypothesis or not. The first one, the weight of dieters will fluctuate. Do you think it's a good uh, hypothesis? I'll take a moment to think about it. All right. Now, the answer is it's not a good theory, a uh, hypothesis, because it's, it's always true. Okay, this is not falsifiable. It's always true. Second one, men are more active. Is that a good hypothesis? Um, if you want, I mean, you can pause the video, think about that, and then come back. All right. Now it's this second one is better than the first one. However, it's not good enough because men are more active than what? You need to compare. Okay. Uh, are you saying uh, then animals and uh, lions or a uh, woman? Yeah, you need to specify. Uh, number three, women show more symptoms of depression than men. Is that a good hypothesis? Pause the video and then come back. Okay, now number three, um, it is a good hypothesis. Now a good hypothesis, you mentioned um, uh, independent variable, IV, and the dependent variable, DV. Uh, so in this case, we are comparing gender differences. So gender dif gender will be the IV, and uh, DV uh, will be the depression, symptoms of depression. And it's measurable, so it's a good hypothesis. All right, All right. we'll stop here, and click uh, 2 will talk about um, for uh, further talk about um, uh, testing uh, theory.